Let's take a silent moment to remember the men and women who give their lives for our country. thought about, prayed for, thanked him for. He's given us freedom that they died for. Freedom that we could be here and worship together. There's just countless things that we can thank God for and praise and reasons to worship him and praise him. But putting all that aside, The main reason to praise and worship God is because, please. seated. 
Well, good morning. So glad that you're here with us. And if you're new here, I am Pastor Martin, and uh, we just love to have you here. The bike rodeo that is going to be happening here at the Cross on June 18th from 10 a.m. to noon. Uh, it's for ages uh, up to 14 years old. And so what we want you to do is bring a bike, uh, bring your bike with you. If you have a helmet, bring your helmet. If you don't have a helmet, there's going to be a helmet giveaway there. Uh, there are going to be some bikes that are going to be given away there. Uh, but it's going to basically be a time where you're going to get some safety tips and training on how to have bike safety. There's a safety course that you're going to be able to run through for the kids for that. Please come see me. I will point you in the direction of Cindy Stone, who is uh, kind of leading that up. And uh, we definitely would love to have some volunteers for that. Uh, but that is on June 18th from 10 a.m. to noon, a bike rodeo here in our parking lot. Uh, tomorrow is Memorial Day. The office will be closed tomorrow, but we will be having Celebrate Recovery. Um, we are going to be having a kind of a picnic cookout uh, here at the Cross. And so if uh, you have time and you would love to come, we would love to have you come and join us with Celebrate Recovery. It's a great time to get to know people, great time to connect with people there, and uh, would just love to have you be a part of our Celebrate Recovery. And that is going to be tomorrow um, at 5.15, I believe. Um, we also have coming up on June 5th, we have our uh, graduate Sunday. We're going to recognize our graduates, and so please come for that. If you're a graduate, please come. We have, some spe we have a special gift for you. We want to recognize you and the accomplishment that you have done uh, throughout your school year. And so um, we have our Celebrate Recovery. Oh, I said that. We have Matthew's Market, which is open uh, uh, and, uh, not tomorrow, but we'll be open Thursday from 4 to 6, and uh, we usually are open on Mondays as well from 11.30 to 1. And if you're in need of food, please come to our market during our market times. It is there for you, but also uh, we would love to have you volunteer. It is a wonderful ministry to be a part of. It is a wonderful place, great people that are already at ministry. And then I did forget one more thing, but I didn't forget it. Our cookbook. We have a cookbook that is uh, being made uh, by Martha Dane. Uh, she's putting it together with a couple of different people taking in the um, recipes. And uh, we are going to be trying to get that put all together by June 12th so we can send it out so that we can get it produced and made and then sell them. Um, the profits of uh, the cookbooks are going to go to Celebrate Recovery, so it is going to we need it to be legible so that we can read it. That's the first thing. Most likely best is typed out. We need your name on it. And you can give that to me, to Martha Dane, to Donna Herman, to Tiffany Noble, or Chris Medeiros. Any of those can uh, take your uh, recipe, and then what we will do is put it in that cookbook and then uh, produce this really great cookbook that we can have with everybody involved in the cross. So it's a very exciting thing. And uh, you want to be a part of that, just make sure you send it to one of us. Worship, please stand. Heavenly Father, most gracious God, we thank you for this day, a day that we can be in your house, a day that we can celebrate you, a day that we can rejoice as one body together, praising you and giving you glory because you are worthy of glory and you alone. Father, we just pray your presence will be known in this place today. Jesus, we invite you in, and Holy Spirit, come fill our hearts so that we will be overflowing this week and just going out praising you all week long. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
If you would please stand. Jesus said to his disciples, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. I know each and every one of us face trouble, trials, temptations, whether they be physical ailments, emotional, mental, the struggles and the rigors of life often cause quite the amount of turmoil in our hearts. But Jesus said that we can have peace in him, that we can come to him with, his, with our troubles, we can come to him and we can take heart because he has overcome the world and he can help us overcome the things that we are dealing with. And so this morning, if you're struggling with something or if there's just something in your heart, open as they always are here, as we sing, if the Spirit leads, won't you come?
chains But I've been freed and forgiven I'm not going back I'll never be the same Heavenly Father, most gracious God, we thank you. We give you praise today that we are able to be in your house. We give you praise for the gift of life. We thank you, Lord, for the many blessings that you have given us. Even in the midst of hard times, there is always something that we can praise you for. And we can praise you for the fact that we know you will never leave us nor forsake us, that you're so Lord we give you praise today we thank you father that you're a loving father and a giving father we thank you that you're a father that promises good things and we know that your promises will always come to completion we thank you Jesus that you are our savior the one who was willing to step down from heaven willing to come willing to die upon the cross and we thank you holy spirit for your presence always in our hearts always stirring us to do good works and producing that good fruit inside of us Lord, I thank you for this church. I thank you for everyone who is here today, those who are watching on Facebook. Lord, I pray whatever the struggle may be, whatever they may be dealing with right now, dear Lord, that they might find their peace in you. Lord, that they might realize that you have overcome this world. So Lord, I pray you would strengthen their faith today. Lord, I pray you would hear their voices and hear their petitions today. And Lord, you would answer them in a way that they can only give you the praise and glory for it. Help us, Lord, as we turn our attention to the word this morning. Let us be attentive. Allow us to receive it. And Lord, put it in our hearts that we might be changed by you. Move me out of the way. May I speak your words and your words alone. And Lord, we pray these.
Well, when you forget to uh, load the right sermon on your uh, iPad, you might as well have the backup paper copy, so I'm glad I did. <laughs> Jeez Louise. Only Pastor Martin, right? Uh, if you have your Bibles, please turn with me to 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 9. That's where we're going to go this morning. How many of you are gardeners? Raise your hand. Anybody's got a garden? Got a few gardeners here, okay. Have you planted yet? Have you gotten out the things out there? You have? Okay, good. Yeah, we've been doing the same thing. So as, uh, you know, or whatever way you get your seeds, you know, if you get seeds. If you plant one seed out of, the ma- out of the many that are in this packet, would you expect to get a big harvest when the plant grows to maturity and it begins producing it's vegetables or whatever, fruit or whatever you're, would you expect a big harvest? Yeah, yeah somebody does. Wow, you are very optimistic, whoever that was. <laughs> very optimistic. Wow. No, I mean, you, you wouldn't put one little seed in that, whatever, you know, for me, I, we, we're doing tomatoes. One of the things we're doing is tomatoes and we're going to use them for spaghetti sauce. And so, you know, I wouldn't expect to get a ton of tomatoes for spaghetti sauce. If I planted one seed and got one plant, you may not even be lucky to even have anything produced on that plant. But there's a reason why they give you so many little seeds in here. Not that you have many years to plant one plant each year. Somebody's optimistic that could probably do that, but for the most part, you want to plant as they germinate, as they get, they get bigger and they begin to pollinate, you know, the, the bees come and pollinate everything. You get more and more vegetables so that you have a plenty full bounty when it comes harvest time. My in-laws, they, they have a huge garden compared to us. We got a little, little garden out there. We got a couple, some tomato plants, enough to get us through what we want during the summers, do some zucchini, squash, stuff like that. But they've got a huge one. And so they can it. You know, anybody here can? You know, there's a few canners, you know. They, they got enough that they can can vegetables and have vegetables through harvest so that they can use it during the summer, but they can use it all through the year. And they get so much, and I'm so impressed by their garden. I love when I go out there in the summertime and go see their garden and walk through it. It's just a beautiful uh, landscape that they've done out there. But they have so much that they can give it to other people. Because they have sowed so many seeds out there and planted so many plants, and the plants produce so much that they have such a bountiful surplus that they can give to other people. Now, why am I talking about gardening other than I'm going to use here in this passage we're getting ready to read this understanding that as we sow generously, we also reap generously. Now, he's going to talk to the Corinthians about the fact that when they give, because back in that day, the church in Jerusalem was very persecuted, and they were very poor, and they needed help, and they asked the churches around to give to Jerusalem in order to help the church there in Jerusalem. When you give good gifts and you give to this church, you're going to reap generously as also. And I'm going to talk about that and what he means by that. So let's begin here by it says in verse 6, remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctant or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver, and God is able to bless you abundantly, so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. As it is written, they have freely scattered their gifts to the poor. Their righteousness endures forever. Now, he who supplies seed to the sower and bread 
for our food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion and through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. This service that you perform is not only supplying the needs of the Lord's people, but is also overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God. Because of the service by which you have provided yourselves, proved yourselves, others will praise God for the obedience that accompanies your confession of the gospel of Christ and for your generosity in sharing with them and with everyone else. And in their prayers for you, their hearts will go out to you because of your surpassing grace God has given you. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. May God add his blessing to the reading of the scriptures this morning. Paul is talking to the Corinthians, and he wants to share with them about being generous and generous in their giving. Because he understands something when it comes to money. And in fact, back in that day when we look at the Bible, a lot of times when they talk about wealth and they talk about money, they're not just talking about the monetary money that you have. But in fact, in the biblical sense, they are talking about your property, your possession. It's not just being generous with the, the, the money they may have on their hands, but also their property, their, pro, uh, their uh, possessions. All of these things were combined to talk about wealth. And here's the problem, though, when it comes to wealth and it comes to possessions and it comes to property and it comes to money. The love of money is the root of all evil. Some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. Once again, like anything in the world around us, anything that we have, sin has tainted things, and money in itself is not evil. Money in itself is nothing to fear. You know, you don't have to fear that your $20 bill that you have is going to attack you at any point. In itself, money is not evil itself. But what Paul says here is the root of of, uh, the root of of the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. The love of the fact of wanting and needing to get more and more and more. We don't live in a we don't live in a country. We don't live in a place where we want more and more and more and more, right? Maybe not now cuz we're got it's kind of a, a shortage of a lot of things. But you know, a lot of times you go down there's like 16 different kinds of mustards. You know, how many mustards do we really need, you know? We want more. We want more things, more options, more choices, more, 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 more. And it comes back to the fact that the desire to go after the almighty dollar and possessions can become a root of evil in us. Paul knows that giving can be what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion. For God loves a cheerful giver. The selfish part of sin makes us unwilling or reluctant to give because we begin to think about ourselves. We begin to think about our needs. We begin to think about our wants. And just like anything else, whether it be time, whether it be unforgiveness, whether it be money, We want to hold on to these things with a tight grip because we never know if we don't have enough money in the bank account to do this. Or, you know, if we give this money, then we won't be able to do that. We won't be able to get this. We won't be able to get that. The rich man wanted to know what does he have to do to inherit 
the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God. What does he have to do to get an inheritance? And they're talking, and, and they're talking about the greatest commandments and, and, and all of the different things, and, and, and this, this guy's like, I just checklist. I did not. I did this. I've done that. Good, good. I am all in the good. I am ready. I can receive, you know, this, 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 this. looked at him and loved him. Now, he didn't say he looked at him and scolded him or mad at him or frustrated. He loved him because he knew that this, this, this young man was close. He was so close. He was so close. And so he says, one thing you lack. He said, go sell everything you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. Listen to what his response was, this young man. This young man's response. At this, the man's face fell. He went away sad because he had great wealth. So close, yet Jesus knew what was in his heart, that he wasn't willing to get rid of the great wealth that he had. He trusted in the wealth over God. He trusted in his money and his possessions over God. And the one thing keeping him from storing his treasure in heaven was to sell off everything that he owes. He could not do that for God. What does money do? It makes us envious. It makes us jealous. It makes us be willing. Uh, Black Fridays after Thanksgiving uh, shopping. You will see people fighting over dish towels. I mean, seriously, over dish towels. Just like anything else that we put as an idol in our hearts, money can become the idol, and we will forget about serving God, but serve the almighty dollar or the possessions that we have, and we're limited in what we It's kind of like this. I got a brand new bag of peanut M&Ms. I've been eating M&Ms lately. Doesn't show. But I've been eating M&Ms, M&Ms lately. I love some peanut M&Ms, man. It's just been good. And I thought, I'm going to bring some today. Oh, I love the smell of M&M's. Stan, do you like M&M's? My favorite. They're your favorite? Wow, I picked the right guy. Would you like some? Sure. Okay. Well, I won't make you get up this time. Oh, wow, that is nice. That is a lot of, that's good. Look at that. It's really nice. Wow, right, yeah, wow. Very generous, right? You want the bag? <laughs> now I'm trying to be generous here, and he wants the whole bag. Come on. Wow. Well, you know what, though? It would be generous, and this would be generous, too, but mm, there's a peanut shortage. And then I don't have my M&Ms, and I can't eat them. You know what? I, I just can't, I can't do this, okay? So what I'm going to do, I'm still going to be generous. That's still a good portion. I know it's not the bag that you want or the, cup that I, uh, the couple cups that I have, but I have a cup. A cup is good, right? Better than what you got, yeah. But you know what? I still think about those gas prices. I might not be able to afford as many, uh, but Aaron gets into these, man, I'm, I don't have any M&Ms. I got, I just don't know. You know what? I still want to be generous. There you go. See, you still got some more. See, I got a lot more there. But there you go. It's about, oh, five ounces, 30 teaspoons of it. So that's not bad, you know? So, oh, wait a second. Just thought about something. 
what if my wife wants some of these and she starts taking from there? And I realized I gave Stan so many of my M&Ms, now I don't have as many M&Ms to eat. <laughs> Lori! Here we go. That's still a good amount, right? You know, I know, I know it's not as much as this or the bag, but there's still some M&Ms in there, right? Okay. I think I can get rid of this. I think I can... Yeah, they're so good. I got to share with everybody. Well, then I don't have M and M's, and then you don't have M and M's. That's fine. That's not fine. Come on. Here, you know what I do? I can't get rid of this. Here, here. There you go. I'm going to be generous. There you are. <laughs> have have fun with that. But do you see that? I mean, it's silliness, but that's how it becomes. We, we sit there and we think about ourselves and ourselves, and we hoard and we hoard, and we realize that God has given us these M&Ms and given us everything. Proverbs 23, 4 and 5 says, Do not wear yourselves out to get rich. Do not trust your own cleverness. Cast but a glance at riches, and they are gone, for they will surely sprout wings and fly off into the sky like an eagle. I'm not letting these things fly. But in fact, that's true. We can save and save, and we can put all these possessions together, and we can have so We can have a fire in our house, and the house is totally gone, and all the possessions are gone. One natural disaster, and everything that we've built towards is gone. One illness, one financial crisis, and everything in our bank accounts to include our savings can be wiped away in a moment. But there is one person who is always... First Timothy 6.17 says, Command those who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant nor to put their hope in wealth, which is so uncertain, but to put their hope in God, who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. Everything that we have ever gotten, everything that we get, comes from God himself. Rich in his blessings, the things that we receive, the things that we have, his grace, he is rich in his grace in giving us salvation, giving us his love and his mercy every day, and rich in his care for us. His care for the things he wants us to be generous. Now, this was supposed to be kind of a message on tithing because we've been talking about the church and part of the church is tithing. But I want want you to realize giving is more than tithes. We get so hooked on this word tithes that we don't realize that giving is more than just tithing. Tithes are important for running the church. So I want to say that for the treasurer because she's right there and she's Because what we do with our ministries is equipping those for sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. Helping those who are in need. But there is a problem with this word tithes because it becomes a rule or a law rather than a heart matter. It becomes a rule or a law that we look to as kind of, okay, I got to get to this point. 10% is what we always say, which comes from the old text. Trying to hit a number. It is the fact that we become so entrusting in God and caring in God, so rich in his grace and his mercy, so rich in the things that he has given us that we want to pour out those things into other people. 
giving is more than just a 10% thing. It is about a lifestyle that says when God says, hey, I want you to give, to say, okay, Lord, I am willing to give, and I am going to cheerfully give, rather than set my heart on a percentage. Let's take a look sometime in Matthew 23, the woes that Jesus gives to the Pharisees. One part of their, they're talking about the tithes that they're giving. They're talking about all of these tithes. They're talking about all of these tithes that are given. And one of the part is cumin. It says you are, you, you know, they're so great about tithing to the point where they take cumin and they put out 10% of cumin so that they can give a 10%. I mean, come on. Sit here. Oh, whew, that's strong. I don't, I don't bake with a lot of cumin, so I, I, I don't know. I don't even know why we have cumin in our house. I really don't. What did somebody say? You don't bake with. Oh, there you go. That was the problem I had, okay? That's why I have so much of it. I can't figure out what 10%. Is. No, no, maybe? <laughs> maybe. Okay, maybe. Can somebody give me a tithing envelope? I got to give this to Ann. So <laughs> I want to make sure I give a 10% of this today. But they were so willing to do that, but yet they were giving it out of uh, the, the, the sense of doing it for the law itself, but rather than really looking at what God really wanted them to do, show mercy, show justice, and to walk humbly with God. And part of that mercy was to give to those who were in need, rather than abusing their authority and getting more and more things. Big point. If you, are, if you aren't giving... It can help you to reach a goal. You know, like, you know, like when we're dieting, you know, you take so many pounds you want to lose in so many weeks, you know. It's the same way. It could be a goal, at, at least the first mark to do. Okay, I'm not giving. Let me try to get myself to at least giving 10%. But it's more about the heart and allowing God to free you from the need to have more. And that's what giving is really about. That's what tithes, offering, all of those things is to realize to God. It releases us from that, that reluctancy to give. Generosity over law or rule. More than tithes and more than just your money, but with your possessions as well. And here's the thing generosity shows Christ to others. Jesus gave up his life for us, didn't he? Needs of the Lord's people, but it is also overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God. Because of your service by which you have provided yourselves, others will praise God for the obedience that accompanies your confession of the gospel of Christ and for your generosity in sharing with them and with everyone else. And in their prayers for your hearts will go out to you because of the surpassing grace God has given you. It's more than just the fact that we're just giving for the sake of giving, but in fact it is showing our obedience to Christ and giving it shows Christ to other people in that we are giving things and showing mercy to those in need and those who need help. And God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things, all, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. As it is written, they have freely scattered their gifts to the poor, their righteousness endures forever. Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for the food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge 
the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion and through us your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. If we are giving to God with a cheerful heart and we're giving to God in a manner of the in a manner that is cheerful and in a manner of saying that we're not being reluctant in the things that we have, God will bless us. Now, it's not always monetarily. I'm not going to give you some type of, uh, you know, prosperity gospel here. You know what I mean? If you give 10, bo- 10 bucks, you're going to get 100 bucks back, okay? That's not how this kind of works. But in fact, if we are generous and, and generosity is flowing on the things that we have, God will put us in charge of more things and give us more things to bless more people. In fact, what it is is that in our generosity, God blesses us in many ways, not to just include money, but other things. We are blessed. And here's the thing, we are getting to do the work of the kingdom of God by blessing other people and showing Christ to others, which is the most important thing, the sharing of the gospel of Jesus Christ. He uses a proverb here, Proverbs 11, old unduly, but becomes to poverty. A generous person will prosper. Whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. Understanding that we have the ability, especially in this country, we are so much more blessed than others in some sense with monetarial things. Why don't we stop holding on to those things that are controlling us, holding on to those things that are keeping us held down, and allow God to tell us and show us where we need to give, and when he does, do it with a cheerful heart, knowing that we have a God who will provide everything and anything that we need for in life. My niece... Um, we went to church with my niece once. She was a, just a little kid at this time. She was probably somewhere around eight or nine. And we had gone to church, and she had a pocket full of coins. And she was so proud of her coins that she had this money that was uh, she had collected and she had. And when it came time for the offering and to give... She had gone up for the, they had, they had one of those little ones where they brought the kids up. They had a little story time with the kids. And, they, and she stopped halfway through. And I'm like, what is she doing? And I could see her kind of messing with her pockets. And I'm like, what's going on? And she stood there for a few moments. And, 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 I, and she, what, was, what was going on was she was wrestling with this idea. She knew she wanted to give to God, but she had these coins, and these coins were really precious to her. And so she wrestled with it for a moment, and then I just saw her kind of stop wrestling and kind of have a smile on her face, and she went right back up. She took the money out of her her pocket and placed it there. Coins. To her, it was her whole wealth at that time when she was a kid. She realized that God wanted her to give, and she listened, and she was willing to give those coins. What is it that God wants you to give? What is God saying in your heart today? Are you tithing? Have you given your 10%? Are you needing to at least try to not just work to give that level, but rather work on the heart that your heart is willing to give up? Frustrating me the other day. I'm going to get off on the side. We were driving, and she uses cruise control for everything, and I'm like, what are you doing? You're learning how to drive. You know, we do not use cruise control in town, okay? (laughs) She's hitting the button. I'm like, what is she doing on the steering wheel? She's hitting the button, and I'm realizing, Anna, you have cruise control. You're trying to get the the, 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 the speed limit down in the town. You don't use speed, you you know, you you don't use cruise control in town. (sighs) But are we on cruise control? Are we on cruise control? We'd be willing to give more and not be so reluctant.
God loves a generous giver, a cheerful, generous giver. And that's where we should be reaching in our hearts. Not about percentage, not about where, but if we're giving to the kingdom of God, what an investment we can give. So this morning, I'm going to pray. There's peanut M&Ms. If you're allergic to them, please stay away from them. (laughs) But if you want some peanut M&Ms, thank you for this day. I thank you for your love, your mercy. I thank you so much that we can spend this time together. Lord, I pray as we go out of this place, Lord, that we will just be cheerful in all the things that we do, whether it is giving, whether it is in our interactions with other people, whatever it may be, Lord, may we be cheerful in you and come back next week cheerful once again to hear your word and to praise you once again. And we pray these things in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Go with God this week.